Hello ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I've clearly dressed up for the occasion, as today's video is a special one that's close to my heart, because today I can finally get off my chest that my secret obsession is love is blind. When a new season drops, it's like I super saiyan transform into a soccer mom and have to binge the whole thing in 72 hours. There are actually a handful of shows created by the same producers and team, as well as the same cast members, but most importantly featuring singer and songwriter, actor, TV host, and personality, Nick. Nick Lakey. Vanessa Lakey also hosts two of the three shows that we're going to look at today. And I have to say, if there is one thing they nailed perfectly about these shows, it's the hosts. Because these two are absolutely perfect for the job. I thought we could take a look at these shows, talk about their weak points, and determine what is the worst show in the Love is Blind cinematic universe. Well, let's start off with the one that started it all, Love is Blind. I have seen all seven seasons of this show, and not to flex on you guys, but I've also seen Love is Blind Japan. Now, I said I'm obsessed with the show, but I didn't say it wasn't cringe. First off, let's talk about the dating pod section of the show, which just might be the most dystopian sounding thing ever. Usually, the beginning of the show isn't that bad, with mostly small talk and people starting to build a deeper connection, but I guess the most insane thing about this show is how quickly people can get attached to someone, and I'm really not trying to be an active force of hate, okay? But usually the cast features people in their late 20s to mid 30s, and you can't help but notice why they had to go on a TV show for love. There's also this factor that nobody really talks about where everybody on the show is conventionally attractive, as they're obviously hand selected by the producers. You're not gonna get some kind of Shrek and Fiona type situation. Every once in a while, you get a couple of bad apples in a season who have terrible, selfish personalities, but for the most part, people seem to be taking this experiment seriously. And if they find a strong connection, they get engaged and make it to the next step of finally getting to see each other for the first time. And this is the part of the show where the cringe meter reaches max capacity. It often leads to a lot of kissing and awkward silence as you can watch their brain in real time 4K calculate if they've made a mistake or not. So if you're one of the six chosen couples, you get to go on vacation with your partner and do a really nice luxurious hotel. And this is the turning point where most of the couples realize I met this person seven days ago and I actually hate them. But but between this and the apartments, you slowly get to know the couples and you can't help but feel a connection with them as the audience. A question I've had for ages though is what is up with those golden cups? I like to believe that there are two certain things in life. One, that time always moves forward. And two, being that anybody on Love is Blind is drinking out of a golden cup. I kind of wonder what would happen if somebody accidentally uses a normal cup on set. If the producers have hired an assassin to take out anyone on site. I also have this gut feeling that there's some kind of incentive making couples say yes or no at the altar compared to just breaking up the wedding before they make it to that point because they add so much build up to that moment. It's inhumane to make this beautiful wedding, invite both of their families, and boom. How about no? I never even liked you to begin with. It's pretty dramatized and at times can be absolutely brutal, but there are sweet, genuine couples that say yes at the altar, get married, and actually stay together after the show. One of my favorite parts about Love is Blind is after the wedding finale. They do this year later follow up and it's essentially a bloodbath for all of the drama. And it overall just makes for a really fun recap of the season. Now on to where it stands in the ranking. Plugging this into the scale, Love is Blind has that perfect balance of drama, romance, it builds a story. Easily, this show gets four Nick Lakeys out of five. But if you watch these shows for pure love, you're about to be disappointed. Because the next few shows are essentially, what if we took everything toxic about Love is Blind and made an entire show about that? I present to you The Perfect Match. The absolute legend and goat, Nick Lakey, is back. Perfect Match takes place on an island in a beautiful resort featuring a lot of previous cast members from other dating shows. The goal of the game is during parties at night, you have to find your perfect match who is a person you get along with. And if you mutually agree to match, you get to stay another night in paradise spending the night with them every day there's a challenge you must participate in with your match and if you win this you get to go with them to a board where you select two new people to go on dates with other people in the house it is essentially a carbon copy of the korean tv show singles inferno except the atmosphere is completely different you are bringing some of the most down bad tv personalities that are just trying to get a couple extra minutes of screen time so most of the people here are trying to be manipulative and do whatever they can to survive in the house with every 
season, there is a 100% chance somebody is going to be completely blindsided and crash out massively. For example, in the last season, they featured a character named Harry, and for some reason, he believed he was going to go from your stereotypical F-boy to a stepfather in a couple days. And let's just say that I can fix him isn't a mentality that works in real life. But I think that the worst part of the show is that from season to season, these same personalities come back. They are so addicted to the fame and extremely toxic that they can't find anybody else in between airing seasons. I've done the research and there is a whopping 0% success rate of all of the couples that have been on this show in the last two seasons. And I want to remind you that the whole theme of this is dating. That's like playing the entirety of Super Mario Bros and finally reaching the end slide and Mario died two weeks later. I can't lie, the high amounts of drama do make for some entertainment while watching a season, but it's when you finally reach the end that you can't help but feel disgusted with yourself like you just wasted all of this time. Like yeah, three Big Macs probably tastes good, but it's when you finally have that last bite that it dawns on you you've had thousands of calories of garbage. There are really no redeeming qualities about the show. You are going to dislike just about every single one of the cast members. So let's talk about the rating. This show has some of the most toxic people you will ever see. And for that reason, it does get a bonus point because it is entertaining. And so for that, I'm going to give it a two out of five Nick Lakeys. But what if you could take the high stakes of Love is Blind and mix it with the chaos of Perfect Match? I'd like to introduce you to The Ultimatum, hosted by none other than Nick and Vanessa Lakey. Yes, I loved him. This is a self-proclaimed social experiment where couples entering with one of them wanting to get married and the other one not. The couple will then split up and find new partners for a few weeks. And it's in this time they'll decide if they want to continue with their new partner or go back to their old and finally get married. Essentially, it's the Sneeko Simulator. Wow, sounds like a great idea, right? What could possibly go wrong? Just about everything, as most people don't have a change of heart due to an ultimatum. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's number one of things you shouldn't do to your partner. It's like as soon as they see their partner flirting with someone else, they have that surprised Pikachu face. No, she's supposed to like me. You can probably guess this, but most people don't have enough time to form something meaningful with their brand new partners. But then essentially cheating on their original partners for a couple weeks creates this almost irreparable damage. Overall, I just feel like this one is a one-way ticket to therapy. I don't know who needs to hear this, but maybe just try communicating with your partner first. If you suggest this experiment and your partner goes, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, then there is a red flag on the play going the opposite direction entirely. Interestingly enough, when researching the show, although most of the trial marriages split up, it turns out every original couple in season two ended up engaged or married, but it's debatable if the show had any real effect on their relationship as there might have just been enough time to have passed. And now for our final ranking, the ultimatum has drama, but it doesn't feel like that hatred is truly there. So I have to give it a 2.5 out of 5. Crowning perfect match as the worst show in the Love is Blind cinematic universe. The world of dating shows is so interesting and mostly inhumane, but a bigger point of interest is why do we feel so interested in watching programs like this? Is it to make ourselves feel better? But is that going to stop me from binging the next season that comes out on Netflix? Nope. If Nick and Vanessa are there, you can bet money that that I will be there too. But anyways, guys, that's all my time for this video. I make more content like this if you want to check that out. I also make pop music that's going to play at the end of the video and be in the description if that's your speed. And yeah, until next time, peace out. You know I'm saving up.